Okay, great. Can you hear me? Nope. Great, thanks. Can you guys hear me? Okay, great. Okay, uh, so today I'll be telling you a little bit about learning simple auctions. Uh, this is joint work with Tim Rothgarden at Stanford. Uh, so the general message I want to get across for the rest of today um, is just one uh, which is a general method for bounding the sample complexity of designing revenue maximizing auctions uh, when, when the buyers have combinatorial valuations. Okay? So the setting I want to think about today uh, is similar to the one that Ellen just described. Um, we're going to imagine that there are K heterogeneous items uh, and N buyers right, drawn from some distributions. Uh, and I want to think about uh, each buyer having some valuation function which maps subsets of those items to real numbers, which you can think of as the value that those buyers get for those items. Okay? Uh, and an auction, broadly speaking, this is not a technical talk, uh, essentially decides who gets what uh, based on a set of one valuation for each buyer uh, and how much each person pays. Okay? Uh, and this is just a function of n bidders' valuations, right? Okay. So, uh, as real valued functions, we can map auctions uh, as thinking of them as functions from uh, n, n different valuation functions uh, onto 0 to h, where, um, where you can think of that as just uh, mapping the revenue, uh, mapping to the revenue that that auction would actually achieve on those buyers. Okay? So, uh, in particular, uh, we'll just have this. Uh, and the setting I want to think about is one where we would have M samples, um, each sample representing one draw from each of those N distributions. Um, and I want to know how large M must be to learn a revenue maximizing function or a re revenue maximizing auction from a class of auction C um, uh, for a fresh draw from the distribution. And this is Colt, so you guys know the answer, right? One, one thing you could say is that it suffices to bound the pseudo dimension or fat chattering dimension of the class of functions that we're talking about. Okay, so I wanna give one quick running example, uh, which is the following. Okay, so the thing I'm going to talk about uh, are individualized item pricings, which I want you to think about as just being parameterized by n times k real value numbers. Uh, and I've suggestively used the letter P to stand for price. So price sub colored little person, uh, comma item, just refers to the price for that item for that person. Okay? So uh, for example, the way these work is that, you know, suppose the orange person is first. The orange person walks in, sees a menu, gets to choose any subset of items from that set uh, of items that are available on the menu. Um, and we're going to assume that they're going to take a bundle, a subset of those items, which maximizes their quasi-linear utility, which just means they're maximizing their value for that bundle minus the price for that bundle, which is just the sum of these real value uh, prices. Okay? Um, and then after the orange person chooses their favorite bundle, we remove that bundle, uh, all of those items, uh, and repeat for the next person in, uh, in our order. And we assume that each one of them is going to do this on the remaining subset of items. Um, note that the prices for the items have changed, right? They're now specific to this new person. Okay, great. Okay, so, sorry, I had slightly, I was uh, a bit overzealous with the PowerPoint this morning. Okay, all right, so uh, the revenue of one of these things uh, just looks like the revenue of a set of individualized item pricings is just the sum over people of the prices that they paid for the items that they bought. Okay, so slightly more formally, we could ask what the sample complexity of maximizing revenue over this class would be. Right? Uh, and I want to note that because I've made no assumptions such as submodularity or unit demand or additivity, uh, that standard shattering arguments are kind of annoying in this setting um, because buyer's valuations don't separate nicely across items, right? If I change the price for apples, that might change the, the demand for grapes in some non-intuitive way, okay? Uh, so the general idea of this uh, paper is one that you can take home and apply to your favorite uh, middle school auction theory uh, homework assignment, which is, uh, which is the following. Okay, so again, I just wanna remind you, uh, an auction does this. It chooses who gets what and how much they pay. Um, 
And so the, the informal version of the theorem of the paper is if the allocation rule is simple, or the set of allocation rules are simple, and once you fix an allocation rule, the revenue is a simple function, then you're going to get small sample complexity, right? This is just like composition, a general thing. You could probably prove some formal version of this like on a napkin, right? Okay, so slightly more formally, what I mean is if uh, linear separability, I guess came up in Ellen's talk too. Uh, okay, so if the allocation rules are linearly separable, um, meaning that there exists, you know, I can, I can flash a definition for that in a minute if you'd like, um, but if the allocation rules are linearly separable and the revenue functions fixing an allocation rule have some bounded pseudo dimension, that immediately gives you a sample complexity guarantee for learning revenue maximizing auctions from that class. Does that make sense? Okay. I see some shrugs, I see some yeses, so uh, feel free to ask questions. Okay. So briefly, I just want to mention um, that this is not the first time people have studied this problem. Uh, the, the specific bounds that we give in this paper are, are not, uh, I don't think any of them are new in terms of like the precise sample complexity they get. Um, uh, but there are lots of papers that have come before us that have talked about um, sort of revenue maximization and learning, uh, learning from samples uh, for, for revenue maximization. Um, I won't belabor the points here, uh, but one thing I do want to mention in particular is a paper uh, that came from some combination of this community and some other people who are not in this room uh, who actually use linear separability uh, in a, in a somewhat simpler setting, but also in the context where, uh, where you do have, uh, you have buyers who are trying to decide which bundles to buy, right? And they show that linear separability is a nice way to get sample complexity results there. Um, it's also the case that uh, I and some, some different co-authors used it in a different context, um, but also one where you're trying to get generalizability for another auction theoretic problem. Um, yeah, and the particular notion of linear separability and compression comes from much earlier, but uh, the theorem we use uh, is from a paper from you know, this community. Um, okay, so I briefly want to mention uh, that, like, I know that individualized item pricings are maybe not like the most exciting set of auctions you've ever heard of, um, but uh, the set of uh, auctions that we get results for uh, are are very active in terms of like the area of study, right? The, all of these different uh, recent papers are things that uh, have actually studied item pricings or grand bundle pricings or uh, other auctions uh, that our framework applies to, okay? So we have a couple of open questions. I don't think these will be particularly meaningful if you um, didn't grok the set of, if you didn't grok the set of like specific versions of the bounds that I gave right here. Um, but I'm happy to talk to any of you offline uh, about, about these things. Thanks.